Hello friends! Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. In tonight's episode, I'm going to be solving Code Wars katas um, and just kind of talking through my process. So I'm going to start with um, kind of like some of the easiest ones. Maybe I'll even um, solve it in multiple different ways and then move on to maybe some harder ones. And also, if you're watching live, you can throw down some suggestions in the chat as to some katas that I should try to solve. Um, and also, if you're not watching live, throw some suggestions in the as a comment, and in next week's episode, I can attempt to do those katas as well. Let's get right into it. Um, I am also going to be creating, um, it's not created yet, but I will be creating a GitHub repo where I'm going to post all of uh, my solutions and comments and links to the katas that I do solve. So be sure to check that out when I create the link. Um, so if you're not familiar with Code Wars, uh, it essentially has lots of small programming challenges that um, you can do to practice practice your code. Uh, and they have uh, all different languages, so you can do it in JavaScript and Python and um, I think C and C++ and C Sharp and all, all tons of different languages are available for you to solve your katas in. Um, loading. Yeah, so yeah, all, they have challenges in all these different kinds of languages. So I'm going to start at 8 Caillou, which is the easiest of all. Um, they're super easy, <laughs> and I'll probably get done with them really quick, but I think it'll be cool just to see, like, even with a simple problem, like the many different ways that you can solve it, and how you might go about uh, approaching a problem like this if you've never really solved problems before. Where to start? Um, and, if you, and I mentioned it, but if you are watching live, feel free to throw a suggestion into the chat as, as to a kata that I should attempt to solve. I say attempt. I'm gonna I'm gonna get every single one. Um, let's just let's just see what this one is. Students' final grade. Create a function final grade which calculates the final grade of a student depending on two parameters: a grade for the exam and a number of completed projects. The function should take two arguments: exam, grade for exam, uh, projects, number of completed projects from zero and above. Uh, the function should return a number final grade, and there are four types of final grades. I mean, it's ba I think it's a, a basic grading system. I don't know if there's anything special about it. Um, 100 if a grade for the exam is more than 90, or if a number of completed projects is more than 10. Oh, okay, so it's not just uh, like computing the average. It's like you also have to check the number of projects. I don't know. Let's do it. It's probably going to be like fairly easy, but let's do it. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually... Um, yeah, I think I'm going to code it locally. Actually, maybe I think I'll just copy and paste the code in locally so um, I can upload that to, to GitHub. OK, let's get started. Um, question in the chat, uh, does this work similar to HackerRank? Companies can see your profile or just for users to stay fresh? I think it's mainly for users to stay fresh, but um, let me see. Like, If someone were to view my profile like, and was not logged in, yeah, I mean, they can see, let's see, they can see my progress, they can see my leaderboard position. Yeah, so I mean, I'm thinking, like, if um, if you completed a lot of these, then it wouldn't hurt to, like, throw this on your resume. Um, yeah, and then if you go into katas, can you see my solutions? I think if you're, if you're logged in and you've completed that same kata, you can actually see my code in my solution. Um, yeah, you can see all of the ones that I've completed. I actually like I myself um, don't don't spend too much time on, time on this site, but I do recommend like uh, when I was teaching at Galvanize that my students uh, do it all the time. Let's take a quick break. We are just getting started. <laughs> One hundred emoji. Um, quick tip: if you are on a uh, a Mac, you can do Command Control Space, and that opens up the emoji menu. One hundred. Boom. <laughs> I'll send one in the chat. Um, I think there's also, uh, if you ever watch uh, Wes Boss's videos, he has a, I don't know if he's on a Mac, but he has a tool he, he uses that'll just like insert an emoji anywhere on the machine. Okay, let's do this. Um, final grade, okay. And also I'm going to zoom in a good bit. So, welcome Bob, welcome to the chat. Um, let's just start at the top. There are four types of final grades. 100, if a grade for the exam is more than 90, or if a number of completed projects more than 10. Okay, so I'm just gonna start there and like just very simply kind of like write out in code what this is saying. So this is saying if the exam grade is greater than 90, 
or the number of completed projects um, is more than 10, then um, should return 100. OK. And then if a, yes, yeah, this, this should be pretty easy. So if a grade for the exam is more than 75, or the number of projects is minimum five, so greater than five, yeah. <laughs> um, and you'll notice I'm not using an if else here. The main idea being like if this if block if block catches when it returns the function is totally finished, uh, so it uh, won't even look at the code below that. So technically I could put like an if else, but don't really need to. Uh, we're going to return 90. And then we'll say, it actually, um, let me copy this, because then I can full screen that. Yeah, look at that. And then throw some comments up there. So if a grade for the exam is greater than 50, and if a number of completed projects is minimum 0, Oh, is minimum, oh, is, can I not see it? Is minimum, minimum two. I couldn't see it for, I guess I didn't copy it. So a project is greater than two, then return a 75. Um, and otherwise we're just gonna return zero. I think we have satisfied the requirements. Let's run the example, see what happens. Um, did I zoom out too much? Okay, run sample tests. Those two pass. And so the way uh, Code Wars works is you can see some, just a few sample uh, tests down here, but then when you do your final attempt, it runs it against a lot more tests to run it against different test cases. Yeah, and um, most, and most good Katas will have the tests right there so you can actually read them. Um, I found one earlier where they didn't have any tests written down here. Because um, you can you can create your own katas and it has like some example code, but if you don't fill that in, then people can't see what the actual tests are. Um, but most most good ones have it. Um, all right, should I attempt it? Actually, I'm not gonna attempt it. Here's what I wanna do. I want to um, I wanna play around with this locally and like maybe write it some other ways. Um, let's do this. So in here, I'm going to create a new file. Let's call it uh, finalgrade.js. And then we'll have this, uh, this function, final grade. And then we'll test it a few times. Actually, we can do this. So um, I think built into Node is this uh, assert. And we can just use that. Um, acquire assert. So I don't, I'm not even going to bring in a test library. I'm just going to say um, log final grade uh, 112 is equal to 100. And we're going to assert that that is true. I think I think that's how it works. I don't know. Let's not use assert. Let's just log it. Um, maybe we'll come back to that. So I'm gonna log that. That should log. That should log true if we're doing everything right. And then this with 85 and five should log true if I compare it to 90. Um, all right. Let's run the code. So if you've never written JavaScript and ran it locally, um, you can um, use Node. So I have this file called finalgrade.js, and in my terminal, if I go into that directory and then just type node final grade, it'll actually run the code. Um, and so notice that it logged true because our code is working. Um, so Chris G mentioned he started word values today. Maybe I'll check that one out. Can you post a link in the chat? Um, I guess you don't want me to solve it for you. Or maybe, I mean, I, I think here's the thing, like even with something like Code Wars, like even if you do solve it, if you come back to it like a month later or two months later, it's good to just practice and make sure that you can just still just do it from scratch. Like even if you have seen the solution before. Okay, um, let's think of some different ways to, to write this. 
Okay. I think I could like kind of get functional with it. Here, here's what I'm thinking. Um, you, we have a function that basically does this test inside of it and returns a hundred. Hmm, I don't know. Let's see. I thought I was going somewhere with this. I may, I may not. I may just choose another one to solve. <laughs> um, but there's got to be more than one way to solve this, right? So I got my if statements. Um, I was thinking like a lot of times problems that are solved with a lot of if statements, you can use like an object and um, store uh, properties in the object and then their values are like the result of an if statement. I'll solve one later that does that. Okay, let's keep moving. So that one's good. Um, I, I'll put it in the repo and upload it soon. Let's see if I got it right. Attempt. Ooh, I failed. <laughs> um, expected zero instead got 75. Expected zero instead got 75. So um, if we look at the instructions, it could be that I have to do greater than or equal to five and greater than or equal to two. I think that's probably where I went wrong. Because it does say uh, minimum two. I'm not really clear on their on their verbiage. Let's try it. Attempt. Expected zero instead got seventy five. Expected zero instead got ninety. Okay. Um, let's look at these other test cases. So if the exam is 99, it should return 100. If the exam is 10 in the, yeah, it should return 100. If the final grade is 55, which should solve, uh, satisfy this, and three, then we should get 75. If the final grade is 55 and zero, because projects would not be greater than two, then it returns zero. Um, it's tricky. Expected zero instead got 75. So for whatever reason, maybe this just needs to be... Oh, not or. No, it should be or. Oh, okay, so let's... Let's read the read the read the description again because I think one of these might need be need need to be an and instead of an or. If a grade for the exam is more than ninety, or I think that's my problem. If a grade for exam is more than seventy five, and if a number of completed projects is minimum five, so this actually needs to be and. I read that wrong. Read the instructions always. Okay. If a grade for the exam is seventy five or more, and if a number of completed projects is minimum two, and I think I'm gonna get rid of the equals. Zero in all other cases. All right, attempt. <laughs> uh, expected 90, instead got 75. I think that's where I need to use greater than or equal to. I hate just plugging things in to see if they work, though. <laughs> like, I want to I wanna solve the problem exactly as they describe it, but uh, for me, minimum 5 is ambiguous. It's like, does that mean greater than or equal to five or greater than five? It's, I mean, it sounds like greater than or equal to five, right? If it's minimum five and minimum two. Did I already try that? Okay, that worked. <laughs> um, all right, we're off to a great start. A problem with simple if statements, and I got it wrong like four times. But you saw my process, and my main issue there was I didn't read the instructions correctly. All right, submit final. Awesome, let's find another one. And uh, if you're just joining us live in the chat, uh, feel free to throw a suggestion as to a kata you would like me to solve. Let's do one more eight Caillou and then I'll move on to seven Caillou. Um, century from year. The first century spans from the year one up to and including the year 100. Let's take a quick break. Tonight I'm drinking peach pear lacroix. 
<clears throat> oh yeah, and if you um you didn't see my live stream from last night, check this out. Whoa, I made this uh, this desktop tool where I can actually like highlight a specific section of my screen. It's pretty sweet. I can do a, a keyboard shortcut and then it pops up. I'm gonna try to use that pretty often. I should have used it earlier, like talking about my code. Well, you see, we uh, have a function with two parameters and we have this if statement here. I don't know, it should come in handy. Um, yeah, let's do this one. So this, the first century spans from the year one up to and including the year 100. The second from the year 101 up to and including the year 200, etc. Given a year, return the century it is in. Input and output examples. Um, so this is the 18th century. Uh, this is the 19th century, and then 1901 would be the 20th century? Is that what it's saying? Yeah, I think it is. What does Caillou mean again? Um, it's, it's the difficulty, but I think both Caillou and Kata are like... This might be from uh, Zen and the Art of War? I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken. Let's look it up. Yeah, so uh, Caillou is a Japanese term used in modern martial arts as well in tea ceremony, um, desi designating various grades, levels, or degrees. There you go. <laughs> um, and then uh, I think kata is like a, a practice. Um, detailed choreographed patterns of movements practice either so solo or, or in pairs. So, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Um, and so there, there are a lot of different ways to approach this. You could you could use um, just like if statements and like if it's between this number and this number, return this century. If it's between this number and this number, return that century. However, that's gonna be a lot of if else statements. So here's what I'm thinking we do. Um, let's like copy our examples. So, we can take this number, look at the first two numbers. Well, I guess first we'd look at the second two numbers. If the second two numbers are greater than um, zero, we're gonna add one to the first two numbers, right? So if the uh, second two number is greater than one, so if you add one to 17, you get 18. Um, second two numbers are zero, so you leave the first two number, you just get 19. Second two numbers are one, you add that to 16, you get 17. Second two numbers are zero, so you just return the first two values of 20. That should do it. Um, so here's what we can do. We can say um, century is going to be the year divided by 100 and then take the floor of that. Um, and let's just, let's just see what we get if we were to do that. So, whoa. Um, so Code Wars is apparently logging a bunch of stuff, so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna open a new tab and then open the DevTools. So if we did like uh, 1900 divided by 100 and we took math.floor of that, that gives us 19. So by doing this, we're gonna get those the first two numbers. Um, and then would we consider this the decade? And this is gonna be um, the remainder of the year divided by 100. Right, so uh, 1900 mod 100 is zero, but 1901 mod 100 is one. So that'll give us the decade. Um, and then we'll just say if decade is greater than zero, then we're going to return century plus one. Otherwise, we're just going to return the century. Yeah? 
Why don't you try it out? Uh, I'm just going to do the... Well, that's weird. <laughs> Let's do the, the local solutions first. Run sample tests. It's passing. Does anyone see any issues with what I've done? <laughs> um, and can we clean it up? So the century is... I guess, what would be a better word for this? Not century, not... I mean, because technically if it's not the century because we might have to add one to it. I don't know. Um, here's what I'd like to do. I think we can maybe write this all on one line. It might be a little ugly, but I think we can do it. So we'll do century from year.js. Here's what we do. So it will say um, if the decade is greater than zero, we're going to return. Actually, let's store the. F we can do it on two lines. So we'll return uh, century plus one. Hey, Brooks, welcome to the stream. Um, else return century. Yeah? Am I going to create a clan? I guess I could. We could do like a Coding Wars clan. Uh, I think I, I swapped those, the ternary. Yeah, so this says, if the year mod 100, which is the decade, is greater than zero, then return century plus one, otherwise return century. Um, and then we could like throw that in there too. Yeah? One-liner? <laughs> it's ugly. I would never write code like this if I were on a team. Let's see if it works. It works. Um, Bob says we can have some 1v1 numbers. <laughs> like, uh, see who in the coding guard com guarding community can complete the most. Cool. I'm going to submit my solution that's a little more ver verbose because it's a little easier to read, a little easier to understand. Uh, attempt. We did it! All right. Um, note to self, in a future episode, I am going to um, build a soundboard so I can have like a da-da sound or like a drum roll sound. I don't know. I think it'd be fun. Um, Oh, we can one-on-one -on -one some noobs, <laughs> is what Bob's saying. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. All right, so we did two um, of the eight Caillou. Let's move on to seven Caillou. We're graduating, moving up in the world. And right now, I'm, I guess I'm just choosing uh, newest. We could also sort by hardest, easiest. Let's sort by popularity. Mumbling. Let's see what this one's about. Oh, and actually, let me um, let me link to these in my code. And then uh, this one. Oh, wait, did I forget to press the final submit? I think I did. Let's go back to that uh, here. Oh no, I guess I did. Never mind. <laughs> um, all right, let's see what mum mumbling is about. Um, this time, no story, no theory. The examples below show you how you write, how to write function acume. Okay. Um, so given a string. We want to return a new string. Let's zoom in a little bit and use my fancy tool. So given a string A, B, C, D, we want to return a new string that is the first letter capitalized once, the second letter twice with the first one capitalized, the third letter three times with the first one capitalized, the fourth letter four times with the first one capitalized, and repeat. Um, I think I think that's basically all that we're doing. Um, so even like in the case where we receive a string that has like uh, capital or not capital, um, 
the output string still only capitalizes the first one. All right, let's do it. This sounds fun. <clears throat> Enhance. OK, so um, essentially, I need, so I get in a string. And the first thing that I would probably need to do is split this thing up. So essentially, break it out into all the separate letters. Um, and I'm just double checking, like, it's not reorganizing the letters in any way. And if there are duplicate letters, does it care about that? Let's see some of the examples down in the bottom. Yeah, so like even if a, an input string has like two Fs side by side, we're still outputting those in the in the sequence that comes out of it. So no gotchas there. Um, so here's my thought. We first uh, split the string into, um, well, yeah, sp split the string into separate letters. Um, No, I don't think we do. We don't, we don't have to do that because uh, in JavaScript, we can access each individual character. OK, so I'll say iterate over the string. And initially, we'll need uh, a place to store the result. And then as we're iterating over the string, we'll take the um, append the current letter um, i times i plus 1 times to the string. And then um, we will need to capitalize the first append and um, we will need to append a dash if it is not the last letter. You feeling me? You with me? So. Um, a place to store the result, main idea is like let result equal an empty string. And um, essentially, that's going to be the, the thing that holds onto that, that we're going to actually build up. And then we need to iterate over the string. So I'm going to do a simple for loop, let i equal 0, while i is less than uh, result.length, i plus plus. And then inside of there is where, we're, where we want to do this. Um, so a com append the current letter i plus 1 times to the string. So like when i is 0, we want to append the letter a one time to the string. Um, and when i is 1, we want to append that letter two times, etc. So we're going to need another for loop. So I'm going to set let. Um, could use j. I was trying to think of a better better variable name for it, because I'll, I'll, I'll rename it afterwards. Um, but essentially, this is going to be the iteration that repeats for each letter. So we'll say while j is less than um, i plus 1, j plus plus. OK. Um, capitalize the first append. So we'll say uh, if j is equal to these double equals is equal to zero. Then we want to say uh, result plus equals um, the s. And I'm going to give this a better name. Let's call this input. Uh, and actually, yeah, so this shouldn't be result.length. This should be input.length because this is iterating over that input string. And then if j is zero, that means this is the first one that we're appending. So I want to append input at i dot to uppercase. OK, else we want to append um, input at i to lowercase. Because there were some cases where, like the yeah, like this, like the input is capitalized, but everything afterwards needs to be lowercase. Yeah. Um, and then append a dash if it is not the last letter. That should come outside of here. So we'll say um, if i is not equal to input dot length minus one, because that would be the last indice. 
we want to say result plus equals a dash. Like that. Cool. Let's see if it works. I can think of at least five refactors that would make this thing easier to read. Um, and then you could probably also do this with a reduce. Let's see what happens. Whoa, it ran my tests? Why? Run sample tests. Oh, I'm not returning anything. <laughs> okay, so after the for loop, I need to return result. Of course, the last thing you always do. Hey, it's working. It, and that's just for the, the sample tests. Um, but let's let's do some refactoring. So I'm going to pull this down locally. Um, this has a horrible name. Like, essentially, this is an accumulator pattern. Like, that's why they called it accum. Um, but they should, they should give it a better name. I don't know. Let's create accum.js, throw our function in there. And let's make this better. So the first thing I want to do is uh, change these variable names. Um, for one, right here, input at i to uppercase. Let's let's store this in a variable because we're we're using it multiple times, um, and it would make the code a little bit readable more more readable if we said like uh, current letter, and that's input at i. And then now down here, this can be current letter, and then current letter. It's a little bit easier to read, right? Um, and then append the current letter i plus one times to the string. So this is saying um, this is the number of times that we're going to append uh, j. Wait, no, I guess i plus one is. Um, and let's actually store this in a variable too. Let's say count is i plus one. So the number of uh, times we're going to repeat this letter, that's that variable. Okay. And I want a better variable name for J. Like J is the current, we call this counter. Let's call this, let's call count total count. And then we'll call J uh, counter. Yeah. And then uh, append a dash if it is not the last letter. If I. So I mean, really, I is like letter index. I mean, really, it might. We could, let's, if we call this index, it's a little bit more readable too. Index, 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 index. Yeah. Should still work. Let's check, let's try it. Um, the, really the, the main reason I'm doing this is because um, code is for humans. <laughs> like, let's take a quick break. Um, yeah, but like we write in a specific syntax, but you don't have to make your code, um, like so terse and like hard to understand. Like if you, if you use good variable names, the next time you come back to this code, uh, it's going to be, uh, a lot easier to pick up from where you left off and like understand your thought process when the last time you were doing it. Um, which is why I like to use like very descriptive variable names. Okay, so that works. Let's try to do this with a reduce. Okay. So the first thing is um, reduce only works on arrays. So I can't just say input.reduce, so I actually need to turn it into an array. Um, so here's what I'll do. So this for loop is essentially gonna get turned into uh, input.split because uh, input.split will take a string, and let's actually see this in action. So let's make this bigger. So if you, um, yeah, let's say we had a string like cj, and I say dot split, this gives me, well, nope, pass in the empty string, 
Yeah. If you pass in the empty string that says, um, essentially split this string into an array where every character is a value in that array. So that's what I'm going to do. So split the input on an empty string. And then, um, and actually, before we turn this into a reduce, let's just turn it into a for each. Um, yeah, so let's do that. So this will become a for each. For each accepts a function. Um, and we can actually call it current letter is the thing that we're getting passed in. And then all of this code here gets moved into the for each. Actually, uh, before I do that, let's just write it separately. So that's a cum there, and then we're going to rewrite it below it. So you can kind of see like the before and after. So here to iterate over the string, we're going to say input.split on the empty string for each. This is going to give us the current letter. And then we essentially want to do this stuff on the current letter. But you'll notice um, we need access to the index. For each actually gives you the index. It's the second parameter, so we can do that. And this should work in the same way. Let's see if it does. We'll note that. Yep, it still works. Um, and then now we want to turn this into a reduce. And so the way a reduce works is it will take an array and turn it into a single value. So the, the single value that we're trying to create is the string. So um, that becomes where the accumulator starts. So essentially, we want to return this whole thing, and we want to reduce it, um, but now um, not only do we get the current letter, we get the result as the first parameter. And this is essentially the, we'll call it the accumulator. Well, we'll call it result because that's what it is inside of there. Um, and the second parameter to reduce is where it starts. And you'll notice here we're starting it as an empty string. So that's going to be our, our second parameter. And then we can get rid of return result and get rid of that. And inside of here, Essentially, we operate on the accumulator, and then we need to return the accumulator. Um, wait, is this going to work? Yeah. Um, we operate on the accumulator, and then we return the accumulator. And then the next time this function gets called, result will be the previous value that was returned. So um, the first time this runs, result is going to be it's going to start as an empty string. Current letter is going to be, like, let's say we're doing this for. Um, a, B, C. Current letter is going to be A. Index is going to be 0. So total count is going to be 1. We'll do the thing here. Result is that empty string, so we append just the capital A. The input isn't, the index isn't the last one. Um, so we return capital A with a dash on the end of it. And then so result now becomes capital A with a dash. And then current letter is going to be B. And so uh, total count will now be 2. We'll do a capital B and then a lowercase b and then append a dash to the end of it. And then we'll return that string, which is now capital A dash capital B lowercase b, etc. And so this reduce is doing exactly the same thing, but it's just doing it in a more functional style. Let's try it with this and see if it works. Sample tests. It still works. Cool. Um, thinking something else we can do is like instead of using a for loop here, is there a way we can iterate uh, from zero to the total count? I think there is. Like we could we could do a we could do a for each. I think. Um, Yeah, because if you say, I think, new array, and then you pass in the length, that will actually um, give you an, an array of that length. 
So let's so then you could do like a for each on it, but like you don't use the values, you just use the indices. Yeah. Um, let r equal that, and then r dot for each. Let's see if this even works. Will this log undefined ten times? Nope, it only logs it one time. So that won't work the way we want it. Oh well, I'm gonna leave it like that. Uh, but that was a fun exploration of converting a for loop into a for each, and then converting that for each into a reduce. All right, anyone watching in uh, live, do you see any issues with my solution? Like, is there something that you would do differently? And actually, one thing you can do on um, code words is after you submit, you can look at other people's solutions to see how they did it too. So I think we'll do that. All right, attempt. We did it, submit final. happening. Brooks has a potential solution. Uh, what is it, Brooks? So yeah, if we're looking at some of the solutions here, this person is using a map and then returning, ooh, repeat. I have never heard of repeat. Did they write that? No, they're saying letter dot repeat. Huh, a dot, whoa, no way. Look at that, it's built in. Uh, won't let you send links? Why not? Let me see if I can change the settings. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll open Slack and see. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Um, I think is that yeah, that's on a string. Does it work with a longer string? Wow. So let's search for string repeat. That's awesome. How long has this existed? ES 2015? Okay. So string.repeat was introduced in uh, ECMAScript 2015. That's cool. Did not know that existed. Learn something every day. Checking my messages from Brooks. Let me know when you when you send it, Brooks. And okay, I think you sent it. Here, let me open it on here so the, the stream can see it. Cool, but string repeat is a thing, and that would would have made our um, our solution a lot smaller because we wouldn't have had to do that second repeat. Well, oh, sorry, that second for loop. All right, solution from Brooks, here we go. It's empty. <laughs> did you, um, did you save it? All right, I think the stream's delayed a little bit, but Brooks, uh, maybe click save and then I'll like refresh or something like that. Cool. So it goes over the string length. Interesting, yeah, and so instead of uh, appending the uh, the dash like we were doing, they're using uh, result.join. Cool. Um, here's, here's the thing though, so I haven't really talked about this yet. Um, 
When you're solving a problem like this, it's cool to use built-ins, but the th one thing to think about is how much more uh, com computations, like how many more, um, yeah, how much more does, how much harder does the computer have to work to solve your problem? So when we do string dot split, that's one iteration of the whole string. Because to take a string from a string to make it into an array, you have to iterate over it. So I think that's that's one for loop. And then there's a map, and a map will iterate over the string as well. So that's another for loop. Um, know that it's not nested, so it's not, um, if we're thinking about um, complexity, it's not like n squared. It's just a for loop and then another for loop, but it is still more than one for loop. And then um, this repeat, you could think of like a for loop that um, starts off small and then gets longer and longer. And then a join is going to be another iteration of the string because it has to look at every, well, not of the string, of, of this new array we created, because it has to look at every value in that array to put a dash in between it. So this is one, two, three, and then ish for loops. And if we think about my solution, my initial solution, it's just uh, two for loops. Technically, this would be probably considered n squared, but the thing about this inner for loop is it it doesn't it's not always the length of the whole string. It's like only uh, a little bit smaller, like smaller to bigger to bigger. It's like not quite n squared, um, but that's all done in one iteration. We're not doing splitting it, then mapping it, and then joining it, which is three iterations. All right, here comes Brooks's solution. So we've created multiple functions. Uh, the first one will split it to turn it into an array so that we can use reduce. Um, we are then accepting in um, letters, which is what we're, um, this is our accumulator. That's the thing we're building up. This was result in our example. Uh, character is each individual character. And then we're calling uh, letters.concat because letters, what does letters start off as? So I'm having trouble even understanding what this is doing. Is this calling letters.concat? Yeah, because you try to do it all on one line. OK. So uh, letters, does that mean letters has to start off as an array, though? So you're using this reduce, but you don't have an initial value. Um, or does concat exist on a string? String concat. Okay, so it concatenates the string to the calling string. And so if you're using a reduce and you don't pass in an initial value, it's actually going to start off as the first value. So, um, this will clone characters, gets passed in an object that is the current character and the number of times to repeat. Cool, let's run the code. So one thing um, you're not doing is, so we need to capitalize the first one and then join these together by dashes. So it needs to actually be, let's say quick break. <clears throat> So your, your solution's missing a few things, uh, but I, I like where you're going with this. It's a very uh, functional approach. Um, so it needs to be BB, and then C, 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 and then D, 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 like that. So you need to capitalize the first one and add dashes in between them. Cool. And, um, and actually, this is where we could use repeat instead of clone characters. Like here, you could just do, uh, char dot repeat i yeah so that still works cool um, but we need to capitalize the <laughs> the first one and join it on sh on dashes What if we say plus dash? Okay, 
We can get rid of the last one. <laughs> and then we want to capitalize the first one. So we'll do... So this this is tricky to, um, to do a... To capitalize the first one because it gets... If you're not passing in an initial value, this is, is always going to be like lowercase. So I might do something like... Uh, Letters dot concat char um, dot two uppercase plus char dot two lowercase repeat I um, invoke it. Okay, so now we're there, um, but we don't want to append. <laughs> Should I keep this a one-liner? Let me see. Um, we we don't want to append the i if um, i is equal to the length. So we could say plus. We'll say if i dot length is less than string dot length minus one. then we will append that, otherwise append nothing. All we get is a dash. <laughs> um, let's put, oh, let's put this, this whole thing in parentheses. If, not i dot length, just i. We did it! Okay, so, um, this is a one-liner. And I don't like it. It's really hard to read. <laughs> it's really hard to go back to. Cool. Thanks for your contribution, Brooks. Um, let's see. How long have I been streaming? Close to an hour. I'll say we'll do one more. Let's let's bump up the the uh, difficulty. Let's do a six Caillou, and see what happens. Decode the Morse code. Okay. In this kata, you will write a simple Morse code decoder. While the Morse code is now mostly superseded by voice and digital data communication channels, it is still it still has its use in some applications around the world. So my my thought with this is like really the only way to solve this is to have a lookup table. So you have a list of all the possible letters, digits, letters and digits, and their corresponding uh, dot dot dash or their corresponding Morse code value. And then you could uh, basically map this array of Morse code one uh, this string split it on spaces and then each one of those things go to your lookup table to find out what the letter is um, oh the morse code table is preloaded for you as a dictionary feel free to use it okay yeah that's great let's do it sounds easy enough <laughs> um you, you can use it like this morse code at that okay so here's my thought um and we'll copy this, zoom in a little bit, full screen it. Okay, so what we need to do is we'll split this, split on spaces, and then uh, for each uh, code look up in dictionary actually I think I think this could be a map all right let's do it so my thought is we take Morse code we uh, split it on the space and then we map that so this is gonna be the code and we map that to Morse code at the code Lookup table, like, yes, and thanks, thanks for asking, Chris. Um, so, um, in other languages, a JavaScript object 
is really like a dictionary, the idea of having like keys and values. So um, if this is Hey Jude, you could think of it, uh, the lookup table to say like the, well, <laughs> we might, actually you, you can use ES2015 sy uh, syntax to say this, but you can say the property at this value is the letter H. And so this object is essentially a lookup table because if we get the property with this value, we're gonna get an H. Um, and then the property at this value is a, well, I need the quote there, an E. And, oh no, sorry. The property at dot is an E. And then the property at uh, that is a Y. And you can imagine entries for like every single letter. So like every every possible Morse code code is gonna be a key in the object or a property in the object and the value is gonna be the corresponding letter or digit. Um, and so, yeah, it's common to call this thing a lookup table or a dictionary. Um, you might hear it called a property bag. A lot of different words in JavaScript, it's just an object. But if you have something like this, um, and I'll do it. Destructuring might be available. Um, how? <laughs> like, Morse code. Is going to. Um, yeah. Not quite sure what you're saying, Brooks. Uh, if you could clarify, I'm not, I, I I can't think how we would do this with the destructuring. Um, okay, but we've looked each one up, and then we just want to join that again back on the empty string. Looks like it's broken. Let's see. Let's see what we did wrong. Oh, okay. Let's just try. It. I I had to get rid of that code that was above it. Um, expected hey Jude instead got hey Jude oh oh that's tricky so um, it each word is separated by like a few spaces interesting okay it's gonna be a little bit trickier than I thought so yeah let's think about this and actually, let's see the examples so we know how, like how many spaces are in between. So uh, this, yeah. It, um, so it, it is an object, and we. But my thought is like, how how would we destructure Morse code? Because um, you need to be able to say. Um, some prop. Equals Morse code. However, the prop is actually going to be like dot dot dot. Um, so you could use there. There is a way to say like destructure this value from Morse code and set it equal to like a, and then you have access to the variable a, which is the value of that inside of the object. But I don't know. I'm not thinking how we can do that dynamically. Can we see the object? Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure it was like what I was um, kind of like writing out there, but yeah. I think if you log in here, it will um, it will show it in the output. Yeah, so like this. So keys are the code and then value is going to be the character or number or letter. Oh, SOS, that's cool. <laughs> okay, so um, I think we need, can we split on one, two, three, three spaces. One, two, three. So if we split on three spaces, that's going to give us each individual word. And um, then each individual word, we're going to need to 
um, split on individual spaces. And that we want to map with the code like that. <laughs> Brooke says it looks horrible. It, it did look horrible. Um, yes, yes. OK, so here's my thought. If we take Morse code and we split it on three spaces, that should give us each individual word. And then if we take that word and split it on a single space and then create the, um, the code out of that and then join that on the uh, empty string and then join the whole thing on spaces, maybe it'll work. <laughs> Let's see what we get. It worked. Um, this is horrible. This is so bad. Uh, let's let's write this out, and not just on one line. Morse code. No JS. Okay, so that's the one liner, but uh, let's not do that. So instead of using these like fat arrow one line functions, let's just make them uh, actually have a body and a return. So that'll do that, and we're gonna want to return this, and then this similarly. And we're going to want to, uh, wait, nope, here. And we're going to want to return that. So this might be a little bit easier to read. But essentially, this first split is uh, splits words at three spaces. And then um, split word into individual codes. And then um, convert code to letter or symbol, letter or digit or symbol. And then join all of the letters into um, a single word. And then join all of the words into a single sentence with spaces. So <laughs> that's what this, this one liner right there is doing, is doing that. Um, can anyone in the chat think of maybe a different way to do this? I guess, could we use a reduce for this? Does it make sense to use a reduce? Actually, I might um, instead of using a join here, I think I would use I would do a reduce here. So um, yeah, let's do a reduce. And essentially, we're gonna call the word is gonna be the coded word, and we're going to reduce that down to a a real word. And the real word starts off at an empty string. And then we're just going to return word plus Morissette code. Because that will, um, let's take a quick break. Whew. Yeah. So this will take the coded word in like each um, each code in that word, and reduce it down to a single string that is the whole word with their actual corresponding codes or letters, digit symbols, that kind of thing. Let's see if this works. Yeah, that works. And um, as I was mentioning earlier, by doing this, that's one less iteration, right? Because that join is going to be a whole other iteration over the array. But now that we're kind of handling that inside of the reduce, it's one less iteration. Um, I'm thinking we could change this map into a reduce also. The only issue is we have to say, like, if it's, if it's the last word, don't append a space to it. 
which just is seems a lot cleaner if we just use join. I don't know. Let's 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 just let's just do that just for just for fun. <laughs> so essentially, I want to turn this map into a reduce. So. Um, And this is going to be reduced down to the sentence. So we'll reduce, and then our accumulator is going to be called a sentence. And our accumulator starts off as the empty string. And we want to return that plus a space. But we only want a space if the index is not the last index. So in the reduce, we actually get access to the index also. And so I'll say, um, oh, we get access to the index, but we also get access to the um, code word array. And we need that because we need uh, the, the length of the array to check and see if we're at the end of it. Because remember, Morse code is the whole string, so we're not actually storing that in a variable. So we can use that here. So here we'll say um, append a space if and only if the index is less than code word, code word array dot length. Yeah. Append a space, otherwise append nothing. Wait. Oh, sorry. Otherwise, append nothing. All right, let's see if this works. Reduce inside a reduce. And then we're no longer joining. Uh, expected Hey Jude instead got Jude. <laughs> um, OK, so let's see. Oh, I need to return sentence plus this thing. Because because it's the accumulator, we're adding we're adding onto it. So we are adding the space, so I did this wrong. So I think I need to do length minus one. Yeah, so we need to return sentence plus coded word dot split and then make sure that it's less than length minus one. Cool. Um, well, I'll leave those comments in there. I'm going to submit it without comments. But I like this solution the most because it's the least amount of iteration. Can you send a link to one of these challenges? Like, you, you have a challenge that you want me to do, possibly? Um, but yeah, I mean, if you do, feel free. And actually, so Brooks said he couldn't send a link. Um, you might try adding it as a comment. Um, just put, actually, just put the uh, the name of the the kata, and I can I can look it up based on the name. Check this out. <laughs> so yeah, just uh, send me the name of the kata, and then I'll look it up. Okay, so that's working. Attempt. No, we failed. So three of them failed. What? <laughs> Binary edition. Um, I'll I'll look it up, but send it to me. Like, go to it and then send it. To, send me the the exact. Uh, this is called the slug. So j is it like binary dash edition? I'll take a look. Um, however, I failed. And I'm wondering why. Got undefined, undefined SOS, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Undefined, undefined. Expected. SOS. Interesting. So um, if something is not found in there, then we shouldn't append the value to it. Let's, here's what I'm thinking. Like, for whatever reason, if we try to look something up in, um, so if we say object, I'm 
No. If you say a plus undefined, does it say a undefined? It does! Did not know that. I thought it would do nothing. But here's what I think is happening. Like, it's looking up a code in there that doesn't exist, and it's appending that. So we need to say um, if... So Morse code at code, or just nothing. Because if it didn't find it, we don't want to append undefined. We want to append just an empty string. Let's try it. Nope, still failing. Yeah, uh, no problem, Bob. Um, and, and I'll search for it after this. Actually, I think I'll make that the last code challenge that I do. I've been streaming for a little over an hour now. Um, curious, why is this happening? Um, what I don't like is it, um, it doesn't show you the input. Um, what possibly could be undefined? Actually, let's do this. I converted, I converted it to the reduce. That could be where we introduced some, something. If I just do my one-liner, oh, I need to put it into function. Yeah, so if I, whoa, come back. Hello. <laughs> Attempt? No, I'm still failing. Got EE -E expected. You know what it could be? It could be that I'm splitting on um, three characters. Or, I mean, three spaces. So I need to be splitting on. Um, I guess it could be like three or four. Hmm. I don't like this. I wish I could see the tests, honestly, because then I could I could know what I'm. Wh in which case, am I doing something where it breaks it? Um. Okay. Let's see what we get, what error we get again when we use my reduce version. <clears throat> Got undefined, E undefined, expected just E. Okay. I, th I think I need I do need to do this or empty string let's see if we get something different instead of undefined e undefined okay so that got rid of it and here's here's what I'm thinking so uh, so the way to read these tests is got this so this is what we're returning versus what they're expecting and so in both cases, um, we are returning something that has too much space at the beginning. So easiest fix for that is to just trim it. <laughs> and that what trim does is it takes off any white space on the beginning or the end of a string. That fixed it. <laughs> cool. Uh, I don't like that we had to did that had to do that. Um, but it could be that maybe they're passing in some Morse code that like has some spaces at the beginning or something like that. I don't know. Submit. Actually, let me let me add that to all of my solutions that I have here. So this, I need to make sure that the code actually exists. So Morse code or empty string, same thing here. Morse code or empty string. Oh, so Bob's talking about binary addition. Yes, yeah, so I'll take a look at that one next. It might be too complex. I don't know. Actually, no. I like binary addition. We can. You know what I? What I need on this stream? A whiteboard. Because then I could like do like dash dash dash. Do like a, a boolean. Not a boolean. A um, yeah. I think a like a boolean lookup table with ones and zeros. I don't know. And then we need to trim it. I'm just updating all of my solutions so that they potentially all will work. Yeah, cool. All right, last one we're gonna do is binary addition. Before that, let's take a quick break. Actually, this is my longer break, so I'm just gonna get up and take a quick stretch. 
but I will do the um, binary edition, or I will attempt the binary edition one as my last challenge for tonight. All right, back momentarily. Um, I have been sitting down way too much lately. Like, um, yeah, today I bought, I'll show you. <laughs> I bought some table legs from Ikea, um, but they extend. So I'm going to take this table that I'm working on right now and just make it standing height and just stand up all the time. That was a lot cheaper than buying a standing desk. And it should work out to be my, my exact like standing desk height. Um, I used to work at a standing desk all, t all the time, but I've been sitting lately for whatever reason. All right, Bob, let's find this binary edition. Binary dash edition. Cool. It's a seven Caillou. Uh, implement a function that adds two numbers together and returns their sum in binary. The conversion can be done before or after the addition. The binary number return should be a string. I think even though there is a built-in function to convert a number to binary, it would be really fun to uh, write a function that converts a number to binary. Let's let's see what we have to do though. Like, is it returning? Yeah, so it's returning a string. Yes, this will be fun. Talking about binary, cool. So, um, yeah, let's create a function that literally converts it to binary. Um, I have to, I have to like refresh my memory. So I did this back in college. I got, I got a computer science degree. So I did it back in college. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's do this. So I'm gonna create a file. Let's close these. Let's create one binary addition .js. Um, and to convert a number. So the binary is essentially representing a number so actually, yeah, well, I don't want to do this in comments. Let's do this in the readme. Binary. All right, so binary is uh, represents a number with only two digits, right? Uh, so binary, by, means two. So we represent a number using only zero or one. Um, the number system that we're used to is the decimal system because we have nine different, uh, I don't know if you want to call this digits or I'll say symbols. <laughs> um, the decimal system has 10 different symbols to represent all numbers. So if we look at decimal, decimal represents a number with 10 symbols. And those symbols are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And with those 10 symbols, you can represent any number. A million, a million and one, a billion, a trillion, one trillion, one billion, nine hundred and seventy-seven thousand, two hundred sixty-two. That is all represented using just those, those digits. Um, however, it's totally possible to represent a number using only two digits, 0 or 1. And this is how it works. So. When we see a number in, de in the decimal system, like let's say 
we'll start with the number 10. What this actually means is uh, this here is we, we take uh, that value and add it to 10 raised to the power of zero. And actually, um, is that correct? Is 10 raised to zero, zero or one? It's one. Um, let's look this up real quick. Uh, decimal number representation. But uh, the main idea is each place in the number is some power of 10. Uh. Let's look up binary because that that'll because it, it it's the same for binary and decimal. It's just binary is the power of two and uh, decimal is the power of ten. Binary representation. Yeah, two to the zero. Oh, it's it's times. Yeah, times not plus. Okay, so this is represented by zero times 10 um, to the power of zero plus uh, one times 10 to the power of one. And if we work this out, um, 10 to the power of one is just 10 times one is 10 plus zero is 10. And so you can represent any decimal number using this. So let's do like 123. So 123 is 1 times 10 to the power of 2 plus uh, 2 times 10 to the power of 1 plus 3 times 10 to the power of 0. And so this gives us uh, 10 to the power of 2 is 100 plus 1 is, oh no, so times 1 is 100. 10 to the power of 1 is 10 times 2 is 20. And 10 to the power of zero, of 0 is 1 times 3 is 3. So it essentially breaks this number down into its like its its constituent parts. So like 100 plus 20 plus 3, and that gives us 123. Similarly, uh, you do the same thing with binary. So if we looked at the binary number 111, this is uh, 1 times uh, 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 0. So this gives us uh, 2 to the power of 2 is 4 times 1 is 4. 2 to the power of 1 is 2 times 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 0 is 1 times 1 is 1. So 111 in binary is 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 in decimal. <laughs> cool. Cool, right? Cool. Are we learning things? Fun times. Um, so the way you, you count in binary is like this. So 0 in binary is 0 because this would be 0 times 2 to the power of 0, which is 0. 1 is just 1 because this would be 1 times 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. Uh, 2 would be one zero because this would be two to the power of one uh, plus zero which gives us two three would be one one because this would be two to the power of uh, one plus one is three uh, and then four is wait do we do that right yeah four is one zero zero um, because that's 2 to the power of 2 plus 0 plus 0. And then 5 is 1, 0, 1. And then 6 is 1, 1. Wait, 1, 1, 0. And then 7 is 1, 1, 1. Wow. So that's how you would count in binary. All right, all of this to say, how are we going to do this <laughs> with, with JavaScript? All right, let's try it. Um, okay, so it says we can add the two numbers first and then convert them. So let's do that. Um, let's say um, the sum is a plus b. So simple addition, and now we want to convert sum to binary. So we're, we're, we'll return uh, two binary 
sum. And um, I'm just I'm gonna Google this. So I'll say uh, convert decimal to binary. There's there's a formula. Or there's something that we can do to actually convert it. I don't want a tool. I want the formula. We could watch a video. I don't want to watch a video. The simple math behind decimal binary conversion algorithms. Here's an example of such conversion using the integer 12. First, let's divide the number by two, specifying quotient and remainder. What? What? Give give me give me the formula. <laughs> um, did you how how did you do it, Bob? Did you um, find a like some something we can do with math to convert like each each digit? Oh, this is what we want to do. No, we want to do the reverse of this though. Right, like given seven, we need to get back one one one. Or given six, we need to give back one one zero. Converting uh, two times ten to the power of two. Yeah, so this is kind of what I just explained. But how can we easily convert integer values into binary numbers? The answer is an algorithm called divide by two. Let's do it. The divide by two algorithm assumes that we start with an integer greater than zero, okay? A simple iteration then continually divides the decimal number by two and keeps track of the remainder. The first division by two, okay, I think uh, Bob had just it, it described the algorithm in the chat, but let's read this. The first division by two gives information as to whether the value is even or odd. An even value will have a remainder of zero. It will have the digit zero in the ones place. An odd value will have a remainder of one and will have the one digit in the ones place. We think about building our binary number as a sequence of digits. The first remainder we compute will actually be the last digit in the sequence. Cool. Well, they wrote it in Python. Okay, so he did a sum mod two, and then the answer is the first digit then sum divided equals two and sum two, the answer is the next digit. What? <laughs> uh, let's just let's let's take this description and uh, and do that. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll create our function. Uh, binary add takes in a and b. And then we'll say sum is a plus b. And then we want to return uh, two binary sum. And then we'll write a function that's called two binary that takes in the sum. And it's going to return uh, the thing in binary. So essentially, we need to do this algorithm. And I'm going to turn on word wrap. Cool. So we should be able to say um, binary add of three and four, and this should return one, one, one. Okay. Because three plus four is seven, seven in binary is one, one, one. All right. The divide by two algorithm assumes that we start with an integer that is greater than zero. Okay, so let's say um, if sum equals zero, then we're going to just return zero. Cool. All right. A simple iteration then continually divides the decimal number by two and keeps track of the remainder. All right, so we'll say um, remainder equals sum mod two. So uh, the first division by two gives information as to whether the value is even or odd. An even value will have a remainder of zero. It will have the digit zero in the ones place. Okay, so actually our, we need a place to store like the binary number. So let binary e starts off as the empty string. 
and then um, we're gonna say um, binary equal or well, plus equals well binary equals binary plus remainder but that's gonna be the ones place so we need to we need to flip that because as we do this we're gonna be putting numbers on the beginning of it because we're getting each each next value okay so a simple iteration then continually divides the decimal number by two and keeps track of the remainder the first division by two gives information as to whether the value is even or odd. An even value will have a remainder of zero. It will have the digit zero in the ones place. An odd value will have a remainder of one and will have a digit in the ones place. We think about building our binary number as a sequence of digits. The first remainder we compute will actually be the last digit in the sequence, as shown in figure five. So essentially, we need to do this until uh, we need to do this over and over again until the value is then like zero. So. Um, yeah, so do that, and then we'll say sum equals math.floor of sum divided by 2. Right? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and then we do this again until, while sum is uh, greater than 0. Truncate? What? What are you saying, Bob? <laughs> and here we'll return binary. Will this work? I don't know. Let's see. I have, might have created an infinite loop. Node binary. Oh, I gotta. Am I in the right directory? Oh, I gotta save this file. Oh, I put it in the wrong folder. Put it in there. There you go. We did it. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's let's say we add uh, well zero. So zero should just give it back. Give us back zero. Cool. Uh, let's say we add three and three. That's six. If we add three and two. five, three and one, that's four because that's two to the second power. Three and zero, it's one, one. Just add two, that gives us one, zero. One just gives us one. Yeah, so we did it. So Bob is saying um, five divided by two floor is three instead of two. Hmm. Okay. But I think I did it uh, based on this. I, I took this big block of text and turned it into JavaScript. Look at me. <laughs> but this is my solution and I'm sticking with it. Let's see if we did it right. Let's take a quick break. We'll submit our final solution and then we'll end in the stream for tonight. Sample tests. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> add binary is not defined. I called it binary add. Let's call this add binary. Sample tests. We pass. All right. Um, I need to play a drum roll. So I'm going to find a drum roll on YouTube. Drum roll. Make sure it's not too loud. Yay! Um, is there like a ta-da sound? I have no idea what this is gonna be. Oh, it didn't. Nothing happened. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Ta-da! <laughs> Sweet. All right, we did it. Uh, submit final. I am definitely going to do a live stream where I build a soundboard. So I can have like a drum roll and a ta-da and a 
applause and stuff like that. <laughs> cool. All right. This was so much fun. Um, here's what I'm going to do real quick. I am going to upload all of these uh, examples from today to Coding Garden. Let's create a new repo. Call these uh, Code Katas. Very slow soundboard? What do you mean? <laughs> like it took me a long time to press the button? <laughs> Um, yeah, so I do have some readmes in here. Code challenges. Um, yeah, so that's my notes on binary and decimal. Um, I think I'll link in here to this live stream. So you can go back and watch me solve them. Watch here. Cool. Yeah, to, I had to find the sound and then click play on it. Yeah. So yeah, uh, definitely in a future stream, I'm gonna make make my own soundboard. Um, I'll go up and update the README later, but I'll go ahead and push this up. Get in it. Add everything. Commit it. Initial commit. Push it up to get. Oh no, that's not it. <laughs> I thought I still had it copied. Uh, push this up to GitHub. And in there, you can see all of my uh, examples and well, the, the ones that I that I solved today. Cool. I'll throw this in the description. It's also in the chat if you want to click on that. Awesome. Thanks so much for everyone for tuning in. This was the, the first live stream I did in this format. I think it's really great. Um, I think here's, here's what I'm gonna do on this repo, um, code challenge, we'll say, we'll say like, uh, Kata suggestions. So if you have a suggestion for a Kata that you want me to do in next week's episode, um, leave it in here. Uh, Leave a link to a kata you would like me to do in the next episode. So you can go into this issue and say, I'll just show an example. Form the minimum. So you can add a comment that says, you should do this one like that. And then when you add it as a comment, uh, somebody else could go in and like thumbs up it or thumbs down it. And then next time any of them that have like a lot of thumbs up are the ones that I'll do. Cool. Um, if you're watching now, then you know that I go live, but if you visit coding.garden, you can see my live stream. Uh, let me do that so you can see it. That. Um, tomorrow, at 9.45 a.m. Mountain Time, I'm going to be doing morning tea. That's just where I browse the web, talk about the latest JavaScript news, and then maybe build a little something based on the news that I read. And uh, tomorrow at 6.20 p.m. is a full stream. Don't quite know what the topic it yet is yet, but might actually be building that soundboard. That'll be pretty fun. Um, yeah, and these are all in Mountain Time. Whatever your time zone is, when you visit this website, it'll show in your local time zone. Other thing is, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, every time I go live, it tweets out automatically, so you can get a notification when I go live. Lastly, if you visit poll.coding.garden, um, you'll need to log in with Google, but this allows you to suggest a video, and other people can uh, upvote that suggestion, and it helps me decide uh, what a future live stream uh, should be. So I'm going to suggest myself, <laughs> build a soundboard, add a suggestion. Um, and yeah, you can click on the heart to vote for other people's ideas. Um, pretty soon I'm going to go here in here and remove some of the ones that have already happened. Like I have a playlist on vanilla.js auth. I have a playlist on application state. I might still do a live stream on vanilla.js. Um, and all of these other things are potential upcoming topics. Awesome. Um, Brooks would love to see a code kata web app where you and somebody else can solve the same problem and the code is displayed next to each other. That would be pretty sweet. Yeah, like the way uh, it works right now is you can't see others' solutions until 
um, you submit your own working solution, or I think you can forfeit getting the points and like see people's solutions. But it'd be super interesting to have like a like a real time sync where like you're both solving it, one on the left hand side, one on the right hand side, and like the first one to solve it gets points or something like that. That'd be cool. I'd be I'd be I'd be open to like making something like that. It'd be like code kata um code wars i mean this is code wars i don't know it's like head to head like you're trying to solve it faster than the other person you can actually see their solution side by side that kind of thing all right um i think that's it for the live stream thanks so much to everyone that tuned in live thanks for everyone for participating in the chat this has been a super fun super awesome time have a wonderful evening wonderful morning wonderful afternoon wherever you are in the world i will see you next time whoa that, that's me hi See you later. <laughs>